um, what I was planning to show was a new movie uh, entitled Two Up No Earthly Pole, a walk uh, I've been developing the last three years, which tend to address the polar region with the inherent uh, problem and, and specific quality within a contemporary frame. So basically what the public will have seen, it's uh, 104 long movie, a super wide panorama. This is 32 to 10. And uh, it's basically shot at night with two drones, one having a very strong light attached to it and the other one which is filming. And they follow each other and kind of develop the landscape uh, for the eye of the camera but then for the viewer. So this very strong light which is wandering or hovering over the icy landscape, always developing, hiding, presenting and obviously it's a very very slow development but at the same time the shadow are passing very quickly due to the due to the process. And so you have you lose kind of like the sense of, of of space of time of scale and it's a very demanding uh, piece for an audience because it's also kind of like about slowing down the video media it's about um, a new way of seeing what i was particularly excited about showing uh, this video work within uh within the snow bunker on in the uh, moere num park and obviously this was kind of almost a location made for it. So I don't know if, you've, if you're familiar with the place, but basically it's a place where at the end of the year in March, um, the authority collects snow. And then over the course of the spring and the summer, the snow is melting slowly uh, and cooling down the governmental building of the city. It's a huge uh, concrete uh, bunker where you really have like this kind of like negative presence of the snow and, and the movie obviously is also a lot about the, the way we are seeing this landscape changing qu quicker than the way kind of like the collective memory is adapting to this change. And here again with the snow bunker, you also have like this kind of like missing link or this absence of presence uh, within the space itself and, and, and you have like the moisture as well as water on the floor which would have reflect um, the work in a very mesmerizing way i think it would have been beautiful and uncanny and eerie and uh, it's almost that as this as i did like the project for this this particular space like the space would have entered in a in a really nice dialogue and, uh, and that's something i was uh, very very keen to to work in the video is constructed like uh, like a montage, almost like a um, digital diorama. The real video take from different places, very far one from another in terms of geography, but very similar in terms of appearance and haptic, and also the way we perceive it in something that we call um, collective imaginative space, maybe, or the collective or common space of the icy world. And so I, I took this different moments in Greenland, Iceland, Antarctic, as well as Switzerland and France on the Mont Blanc. And I layer the video like once we layer um, some, some uh, plan within like one diorama. And those give uh, at the end a very smooth and natural way to engage with the topography, which obviously is phantasmagorical and, and and always just trigger uh, association without having like a proper connection. So I think it's very dis disturbing or disrupting once you're engaging with the work because you never really f know what what are you actually looking at. Of Roots and Cloud, for me, was directed this image of the planetary human, this being which extends itself within spaces which don't even belong to its body or which can't even be sensually grasped. I think that we extend our being 
over uh, the capacity of our senses, which is uh, somehow bulversing and beautiful, but disturbing at the same time. And so I was kind of like seeing about the roots, like me standing, sitting here in front of my computer in Switzerland and, you know, spreading a voice in a void of data. And then this will be display like on a website, but like first put together by, by some uh, Japanese uh, video maker. I mean, there's something very poetic, but also something extremely irreal. So the cloud is kind of like a cloud as kind of like a back, like um, obviously the digital cloud, but also a cultural cloud, cloud as an atmosphere of a visual culture. And that's something that I'm addressing in my, in my video work. I'm addressing the visual culture of the polar region, this kind of uh, last imaginary space that everybody think it know, but never experience on a physical way. So it's always about, you know, it's all, always about projection, about phantasma. There's nothing tangible. And I think therefore my work was really um, fitting within the framework of, of this particular title. Well, you can see my work in the same way. So we engage with a particular landscape that we never experience on a tangible or physical way. So it's all on, it's, it's all based on a cloud of image and this cloud represents the atmosphere of a visual culture, the polar culture, the polar visual culture. And uh, through this prisma, through this atmosphere, we're actually sensing something which is that far, but seems so near. And exactly the same way I was saying before, of roots and cloud is kind of like this struggle of having a body and a mind which through technology somehow have been separated from one another. Like I'm standing here, I'm sitting here in Zurich in Switzerland, but my voice is spreading through the web and, and end up in support in something which is not even graspable. So all is very terrible. Well, I've been very, very pleased to be invited uh, to show in Sapporo. I mean, first of all, since a while, I was really keen to come back to Japan. And I really believe that the work I'm doing and the way I'm engaging with the world uh, will also have a great resonance within a, a Japanese public and audience. And obviously, once I start uh, the dialogue about who, what and where to show, and uh, understood like the you know the archetype of the city and like the snowfall which become like one of the biggest uh, management uh, of urban management in the city itself and then um, and then discover uh, the Morenum Park and the snow bunker I just you know I just like had this this image this it was there you know it's like it was almost obvious that I was working on a project which was almost dedicated to this space. Well, obviously on a very personal as well as um, professional level, the pandemic was a huge struggle, a huge struggle and I'm still in. And uh, it brought a lot of sadness, pain to a lot of people. And, and uh, I was pretty uh, terrified um, by how as well the country and people react and and the lack of empathy from one country to another and also on a, on a more uh, local level. So it was a very sad and uninspiring time, I would say. And then uh, obviously for me, it was a huge challenge because I had a lot of travel and production going on, which was also bound with people in other country and, and transportation and, and the freedom of movement. And obviously uh, all this is kind of being put on ice for for while at the same time that was a chance to engage uh, differently with my work and with the studio and maybe like to reconnect with uh, something more close and I think we have a lot to learn out of the crisis I think that a lot can be done in a different way and that's something that I, I highly appreciate and I see a great potential but I also see a great danger and um, and I think that like 
um, to solve problems which are even bigger than, uh, than the pandemic itself. Let's uh, just think about uh, the global uh, climate crisis. Think that thinking global and acting global is the most important thing today. And the pandemic, like, slow us down on, on, on this side. And, and that's uh, this kind of resurgence of nationalism. That's not the way uh, we will be able to kind of uh, work collectively in order to address much bigger issues.